and welcome back to part two of our French Fancy Altered File Folder. Um, last time we got it all cut to size, we got all the framers tape on, we got it all stamped and it's looking really nice. Uh, this, oh, I've got butterflies affixed to it, they're for later, don't get too cheeky. Um, and this is how it's going to go. So the bit that I've decided to start on is the outside back. Now on this one, this is the the mark where the original folder was folded, so uh, a crease should I say. So we're going to put something on the back here that's very similar to the uh, purple one that we're following along with. Uh, this is a nice big pocket, nice big tag, and the lace down the sides is the lace from the that's covering the spine. So that's what we're up to today. So I have selected some papers. Oh, it was so hard to select the papers. They're all so beautiful. And I've decided to use this as the background, the back of the pocket, and this as the foreground. Main reason for this is the printer, for some reason, has decided to put black marks on it. But there's still enough to get a good pocket out of. So rather than chuck it out, um, I'm going to do that with it. I don't know why my printer's decided to be a pain, but it has. So I'm just going to measure and make a mark with my pencil where I want it. And I want it just, just within the crease lines. Like so. And the height will be right because we've made the, the file folder to suit the, the height of this. So put that off there. And that's it. I'll tell you exactly what it measures. It measures six, uh, six inches. Because if you remember, we made the thing six and an eighth. So six should just be about fine. But I'll cut it and try it first. Yeah, that's lovely. Bring it down to about there. Really nice. Nice job. Now, I don't need all of this bottom part because it's going to be inside a pocket. Um, so I might as well just cut some off. So the pocket on the purple one is... Um, it's about four and a half... Four and a quarter, four and a half. Um, yeah, between four and a quarter and four and a half, that sort of measurements. So if I put that there, where it's going, and the pocket's going to be four and a quarter up, which is to there. So I can safely cut this on that mark there and have plenty inside the pocket. So I'll just mark that there. The reason I'm so keen to keep some of this paper is that I really think it would be fabulous to have in, in a collage. Because it's not a real pattern pattern, it's more of a background paper, but I think it would look really good in a collage. So if we can get some, generate our own scraps for a collage, so much the better. So that can go in the collage department and this can get inked and stuck in. Now I'm using a new ink today, <laughs> never used it before, I've just opened the pack actually, and it's speckled egg and I, oh, it's just such a beautiful colour but I haven't even tried it. Look, it's absolutely pristine. So it could be that it's the wrong colour completely. <laughs> it could be and I'm using a, a new sponge so we'll see. I'm going to try it on the back first in case it really is not the colour we want. Oh no, it really is. Look at that. Look. Yeah, that is the colour we want. Lovely. I think this just might add to the sort of overall Frenchness of it. Oh, I think I've put out a new dabber somewhere, did I? No. Yeah, I did. Here it is. Did 
just going to use that. It's easier to get a, a uniform mark. Oh yeah, that's lovely. It's absolutely perfect for fringe projects such as this. Yeah, I think when we've got that throughout the the um, folio, it's going to look gorgeous. You can, of course, use vintage photo, tea dye, uh, any of the browns, really. I'd steer clear of walnut stain and gathered twigs and those sort of colours. They're just, uh, well, for my liking, they're a bit too dark um, for this French style. So there we go. That is, that's been christened now. It's now no longer brand new. Mm, that's almost made me cry. Um, okay, so let's get that stuck down there. And I'm going to use my um, collal for that. I'm just going to do it on a board because I want to spread it out when I've got it finished. There's plenty on there. And just to ensure it is everywhere, I'm just going to use a store card, credit card, something of those along those lines. Just spread it out. Make sure we've got everywhere covered then. I can feel it going tacky. So about a quarter of an inch down, that's looking good to me, and that's all nice and square. And I'll we'll just get a dry wipe, so just make sure it's nicely um, pressed down, stuck firmly, and a dry wipe mops up any bits of glue that are uh, surplus to requirements. And I'm just going to take my bone folder and just give that a really good press because it's over that seat in this crease that was originally in the in in the file folder. So I want to get rid of get rid of that. Okay, that's lovely. It's dawned on me that you can't actually see the pattern of the paper. That's what it looks like. It's kind of backgroundy, but very very nice. Okay, so now we need to make the pocket. So this is the paper I've chosen for the pocket and I need it to be four and a half inches tall. So let's see where I can get that out of without it being marked. Um, there's a mark there. I want an extra half inch on each side, which isn't going to be seen because it's a gusset. So I'm going to put a mark there, which is where I want to fold it for the gusset, and put a mark there. And then I need to cut half in it, well this side's the edge, but half an inch more that way to form the gusset. Then I want to cut it at five inches, which will give me half an inch gusset on the bottom as well. Oh, gussets, gussets. Gussets everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's play the game. Where's the right red Frixie? And that's the the right thing I should be using. So yeah, that's one mark there, and, that, and the other one is would be along there, I guess. So let's cut that at four, uh, five, five inches. Give us half an inch to turn up at the bottom. There we go. I'll leave that because it, it, although it's marked, it's still quite good for collaging. So I'll leave that in the spare paper department. So where are my marks? There's that one. So we can. Uh, Crease that one in at half an inch. There. 
I can crease the other one there where the mark is. And I can just cut down with, with some sensible size scissors. Try these ones. Just cut down there about half an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. But that's fine. We've got no printer marks on that bit there, so we're okay. And then half an inch on the bottom. So there we go. We'll finish now with the scoreboard, I think. And just cut these corners off. Like that. And then we'll um, burnish our folds in. And we'll offer it up. <laughs> it wants to fold that way first, which is fine. Sometimes you get a better fold if you fold it the opposite way to you want it first time. And then fold it back where you want it. You very often get a much crisper fold. Lovely. So let's just make sure that that's okay before we proceed. That is just perfect. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter that this is narrow because there's lace going to go all the way down the side there so it's it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, and it's the, this goes deep enough. Yeah, everything's fine there. It's lovely, in fact. I was wondering if that's the way it should go. This is actually not as non-directional as I thought. Yeah, I think this is up. Well, I'm not concerned about that because all that, all that that does is give us a stronger top edge. So that's fine. Um, but it does mean that I need to mark another uh, half inch along the bottom for the bottom gusset. Yeah, I thought it was omnidirectional. But it's not. So better off we find out now than uh, when it's actually affixed to the page. Okay, so just cut those out as well. That's now the bottom. Yeah, that looks better. Everything's growing up. That's that's great. So let's just stick the top down then. Uh, with the aliens is fine for that. Just that's just going to serve to strengthen that top of the pocket, which is perfect. It's what we want, really. I don't, I don't know why I didn't put it in before. I just didn't. I'm going to put these two bits away in the drawer because they're just getting in my way and they're annoying me. So we need to ink around here. So we're back to our speckled egg. Our absolutely gorgeous speckled egg. It's now my favourite. I love it. But I do love this. French sort of shabby look. I mean, who doesn't? I guess there are people who don't. It's just the right colour. It's not too dark, not too light. It's a Goldilocks colour. Because my dabber is new, it's not um, picking up 
a load of ink each time, which is why I'm having to keep refilling it. It gets better as it gets older. Doesn't everything? <laughs> right, so am I going to decorate this is the question. And the answer is, of course I am, yes. So I think um, what I'll do is use a bit of lace, just a bit of cream lace. I can't say this was just hanging around. It, I did get it out specifically for this. Um, just seemed to want to bend, but never mind. So yeah, I think cream lace is the way I'm going to go throughout this whole thing, because it just it just looks right. It feels right. So that's the way I'm going to go. And this probably has a right and a wrong side. That's the right side, I think. So I'm going to stick that on there. And I'm not too worried about the edges. You know, normally I would fold it over the edge, but we're having lace coming down here. So you'll never see these edges ever again. So, you know, don't worry about that. So I'm just going to put a bit of double sided on. I'm just going to move it off my folder while I do that. Can you still see? Yeah, you can. So just a bit, uh, I'm just going to leave a little gap at the top and you'll see why in a minute. There we are. And I think this probably needs two, two, yeah it does, it needs two runs along with this. Just a tiny gap in between. Lovely, picked up a thread there along the way. Right, so just cut those flush. No need to bend round the edge of the pocket on this occasion. Lovely. Burnish them down, pull the backing off and get your lace down. Side. This is the right side. So I'm, I'm going to turn this around because it's easier for me to see. And I just want to leave a little gap at the top, but a fairly equal one, if I can. Like that, I think. I think that's, I think that's good. And chop off your ends. There's no wet glue, so you don't need to leave it to dry. It just. I do think the cream lace is the thing for this. Even if I had duck, duck egg blue lace, I would still, I think, prefer the cream. It's really, really nice. Now then, what I want to put just along the top, come as no surprise, is these flat back pearls. I really, really like them. They just sing out shabby to me. So they are going to go along there. Right, right on the very, very edge. And for those, I'm going to use E6000 glue. That blinking thread, can you go away, please? So just a little bead of that along the top. A little bead will be sufficient. Just start at the top and just push them down so they're just right at the top of your pocket. Lovely. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's fine. 
So because we're having lace at the sides, I'm just going to cut that last one off, just hopefully so the lace will lie a bit flatter. And the last one of this as well. Which is now quite stuck down actually, surprisingly. So I'm just going to cut it off there. Like that. Right. I mean, if you weren't sticking lace down the sides, you'd want a much more flush. You'd want it to go right from corner to corner. But we're all right there. So, that's going to go there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes, very nice. Okay, so let's get that stuck in anyway. So, a bit of Aileen's will do the job, I think. Stick your um, side flaps over the bottom and then you'll have less problems when you're trying to put tags and stuff in your pockets. Lovely. So just get that into place. I'm not saying that we're not coming back at a later date to decorate this more. That is always a possibility. But at the moment, that's it. Give that a real good push down. Right, so we've now got a pocket, it's got a gusset. I don't want to test that too much because I've just stuck the glue down. But we have, we know we have, we've done it. Um, I don't know why that doesn't want to stick. It's just been a perfect pain. Let's stick some more glue in it. Okay, so that brings us on now nicely to what we're going to put in the pocket. And if you watched my take five uh, the other day, then you will know that I put a big tag in the back of uh, the purple one that I was making. And I'll show you that now. Um, this, is, this is the front, this is the back. Uh, it's got the pocket on. And this is the tag that I made, and it's a big double tag with lots of room for journaling inside and prettiness on the back. I mean, it's gorgeous, actually. But it's my intention to make another one for this journal that we're doing, the French Fancy. So I'll just pop that away in the drawer. And the uh, template that I used, that I got out here, is five inches wide by seven and a half inches tall. So it's a big chunky one, but furthermore, uh, as well as that, it's double. So I'm using, uh, this is a piece of scrapbooking paper. Uh, you can use anything, you can use craft card. That would look nice, anything at all. And just draw around it. I'm gonna draw around it with my Frixian because then I know I can get rid of it with a heat gun. And it seems to be very bad at spotting pencil marks. So that's one, and then we want the other one butt up to it. Right on the bottom where the other one was. Straight up that line. And this will be your double tag. Is a nice thing for a back page. 
there we are, we just need to cut that out. And it's double sided this, it's the same on the other side, which is a good help. I'm going to leave the tab parts till after I've got it all cut out and folded and then I can make sure that they're identical. just need to fold this in half taking care that we have got it in half <coughs> excuse me and then cut the corners off so they'll be the same on both sort of half of the tag if you like. Right, let's just chase away with a bit of heat all of those red Frixian lines. <clears throat> they just disappear as if by magic. <clears throat> So there we go. Now then, the first thing we're going to do is to build a collage onto, onto the front piece, as it were. So we've got these pieces that we had left over from um, the inside pocket. And I've been gathering pieces of, well, what I think suitable collage paper as I go along. So I was tidying my desk, etc. Um, so these are the pieces that I've gathered together that I thought might come in for a, a collage. This just happened to be on my desk. Uh, it's from that um, heirloom paper pad. But, you know, it's nice. Uh, these bits of lined paper, I don't know, they're probably going to make a little notebook at some stage and some offcuts of coffee stained paper. Um, that's just that the stamp that I used on the other one. I just wanted to see what it looked like. But it's pretty. Uh, some craft cards, some book pages, some music paper, more coffee stained craft card yeah and this which uh, I embossed and inked and I, I mean this is just a remnant of, of what I used I think I used it on the grunge page in the Mr Green probably but I quite like that it's quite nice it might go and the rest is pretty much coffee stained bits and pieces but I also have another couple of things up my sleeve um, one of which is this and this is a page that I made. It was white paper and I made it myself using Distress Oxide Spray. And I used it in the speckled egg and also vintage photo just to give it um, some dimension. Sprayed it with water, dried it off and I think that's really, really pretty. And it's the exact colour that we want. It's so nice. And also I have this, which is the Amazon paper that you get scrumpled up in your packages. So I salvaged a piece and I've ironed it, admittedly, you know, I'm not the best ironer in the world, but that's fine. It just all adds interest to it. So I've got, I've got those as well, uh, all raring to go to make my collage. So I do want a sort of focal point, a central uh, point in it, where you know, I'm not so sure I like that colour really, particularly. It looks more green, particularly when you see it with that. I think I don't really like that colour. So what I am going to do is change, change it up and I'm going to make my tag out of that paper that I made. I think that's the best thing because that really is the perfect colour. I don't know whether I'll ever be able to reproduce it or not, should I wish to use it somewhere else in the book. Um, but I think that's the best thing to do. There's no point proceeding if you're not happy with what you've got, not a bit. 
So um, this is just a bit greeny. It's not that lovely duck egg blue colour that we want. So that's resigned to the side of the table. Oh dear, where everything gets resigned to. Yeah, I'll be much happier with this. And I will have some little scraps left that I can just use for collage. There won't be much, but there'll be some. Straighten off the straight and narrow. Oh no. Yeah, so I've got that little bit left, which, uh, which will be fine. So once again, we'll fold this in half. I mean, it doesn't matter that the insides, it has a very strange feel, that oxide. Actually, it's, it feels kind of furry. It's my best description of it. Um, I'll just fold it that way a second while I get the, the corners off the tag. Yeah, this is making me much happier. Okay, there we go. Let's get rid of that. That is a very strange texture, though. Very strange indeed. Anyway, that's that. So we've got all sorts of bits that we can build our collage up on. Um, I would quite like, I think, in the middle to have a focal point using this with some die cuts that I've cut out. And, you know, once again, I didn't have duck egg blue, but I don't think that matters unduly. I quite like, um, I quite like that blue and I quite like that just for a focal point. Uh, not one as well, perhaps. Nothing more than that. I think that's probably sufficient. The um, question is, should I, should I stick them on now and then build the collage underneath it? No. No, because it would be too fake. It would be a fake collage. Let's get my um, decalaged scissors out. So I'm going to use a bit of this that we've used for the back pocket, back of the pocket. I'm just cutting it down to A shape. Well, I mean, it's a rectangle, but it's just any any size of rectangle. Right, so I'll leave that there. And as I say, I've got this book page. Uh, oh, I might put that long bit up there, actually. Oh, it sort of stops there. That's a bit of a shame. I'll cut that off. Oh, what's it like on the other side? Perfect. Nearly chopped that off there. There we go. Um, what else have I got? I've got music paper. I've got that nice craft paper, but if I'm using that as the focal point, I probably don't want um, to use the craft paper. Let's see which, what little offcuts of music we've got. That would go up there rather nicely. Um, with a bit of book page possibly there. I'm going to have to put that sideways on, otherwise the temptation is just to read it. If you see book page on a, on a page, you want, you're want you instantly drawn to reading it. Uh, and I'm trying to... I don't want that particularly. Um, how about we use a bit of... another bit of this. It's nicely coloured and we want it sort of balanced. So if I use that at the top, mm. I'll use a smaller bit then. This is wonderful for anybody that likes doing jigsaws. I tell you, this is, I love jigsaws. And this is like jigsaws with paper, it's great. 
So yeah, that's going to go along there and I just need something to go into there, which is probably going to be music paper. Um, try that in there, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Now then, is my central piece... Do I want music all the way up there? That's another question. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I think it looks all right. Quite happy with that. Okay, so I need to just mark in and cut off um, the tag where the where the shaping is for the tag. That's going to go there. Maybe just a little bit too tall. Yeah, just chop the top off a little bit. Just fiddle around till you've got them where you want them. Uh, there's no hurry, I don't think. There's certainly no hurry here, so I can take my time. That's just, just, just not wide enough. Let's move that over a bit. Yeah, it, it's possible it could be. I'm, I'm just going to fold that over and cut it. There we go. So that's going there, that's going there, that's going under there, like that. Then we've got the book page, just coming up here. This nice patterned piece that matches that piece there. And then the text there. And then we'll make the focal point out of the brown packing paper. So we just need to ink and stick. That's, that's all we need to do. So what's on the bottom? Well, down here it's this piece here. So I'm going to ink as I go and stick as I go. Stick in the, the bottom pieces first, obviously. Okay, and I'm just going to use... I'm just going to use glue uh, stick actually on my on my book. So that's the underneath bit, and it's going there. So lift that up a bit. Wait, get that stuck down. Lovely. Uh, then what happens? The music needs to go down next. I think I'll leave my ink open. kids are out here with sledges and things and it's just started to snow again so I guess we're in for a bit more. It is winter time I don't know why I'm surprised. Well I'm not surprised. So that just goes underneath there just keeping a reasonable margin all around it. Lovely. Uh, I can stick this one down next because it's underneath it's on top of the music paper. the top doesn't overlap by very much at all. Did that come over the top? Yeah I think it did actually. Yeah yeah that's over the music there and the music's over that there so yeah that's fine. 
So let's put that long strip of music on next. It really is very fragile paper, this. It's from a honest to goodness old book. Um, so I haven't had to fake its appearance or anything. It just is old. Some of the songs in it are really quite ridiculous. And I'm sure, quite sure that a lot of them, well, I know you wouldn't get away with singing today or even using words in them today. But I've, I've sort of had a scout before I stick it down just to make sure there's nothing too outlandish. So this now wants to get stuck up there. Snows. It has a sort of weird quietness around. I don't know, it sort of mutes the sound, I think. Strange. There we go. Just this one now. And then I need to work out the size that I need from that crinkled paper, the Amazon packaging paper. that down slightly lower than the other two just as if oh, I was going to put it on sideways wasn't I like that yeah that's better lovely I like that it's nice I love that ink it's gorgeous just made for the job right so now what size of a piece do I want for this um just wanted if the other side was any straighter I need it to, let's tear it off down there. Let's be brave. Pop that out of the way. Okay, so we've got a piece here that's looking interesting. If I tore it off about there, maybe, come to try, well that certainly fits in there very nicely, just wondering if it's just altogether a bit big really, um, let's see. Let's square some of this up with my decollage scissors. It's too it's too untidy, even for a collage. So if I cut that off there, have I still got enough room? Yeah. So let's just cut along there. And that can come down to there. And that I can fold across there and cut. I'm not sure my decollage this is like cutting this but they're doing it that's all that matters okay so that can come in a little bit I haven't got much room there but I could probably just get rid of some of that and definitely get rid of that straight edge Yeah, 
quite like that actually. I think I still have got room to get rid of a little bit. I'm going to carry on with this, aren't I, until it's too small. I'm going to have to stick some more stuff in the background. <laughs> oh well. No, we're all right there. That's fine, and I like it. Excellent. Let's get rid of the rubbish. Let's get that stuck down. I don't think I can successfully ink that. Um, let's just try on one of the bits that we've torn off and see if it takes the ink and what it looks like. Better than I thought. Yeah, right, okay. I can ink it then. We are still on a really strict lockdown here. It's not as strict as the first lockdown uh, in as much as people can go to work if they have to and that sort of thing. Um, but it doesn't seem to be pulling the numbers down quickly enough for my liking. Right, so I'm going to actually stick that on there like that. I don't want it square with there. I think that would look a bit odd. So just up a little bit. Yep, excellent. We're making progress. So I want that just up from there, by what I can remember. I do like that actually. I like the two bits of paper that are balancing each other quite well. It's all looking all right. Let's put this glue book away. Not put that on top of it, it'll stick to it. Right, so I want to make myself now, let's just put these bits of paper, collage paper away for another day. What I want now is to make myself some sort of focal point and um, oh, I forgot about that one. Never mind, that'll come in again. So I've got two butterflies that I've cut from the kit um, and I, I want to include those because they're lovely. Um, but I also have some die cuts that I've cut the, I don't have this duck egg blue paper. Oh, how I wish I did, but I don't. So I'm going to have to use what I've got, which is this colour and quite a bright blue. But I think that's okay. I can live with that, I think. I quite like that. Like that. And another bit of leaf or something on the other side. Maybe that one. And the butterflies. No, those butterflies look a bit posed, don't they? <laughs> a little bit posed. Yeah, but that's all right, I think. I quite like that. I quite like that, but I might come back to it. I'm going to... I'm also thinking that I could have had a little bit of gold through a stencil just the merest hint just to lift it up a bit so whilst I'm thinking of that I'm going to sort out the back cover so I need another piece of my beautiful paper I know that I can print these out again I do know that but it, honestly it feels I don't really want to be cutting them up ridiculous isn't it that's nice isn't it yeah that's the one for me let's 
so let's just mark that. with the Frixian and then I'll be able to see it again. Let's draw that line just to make my life easier. Right, okay. So what I want to do now is come in quarter of an inch. See, I'm working in six inches of space again, for heaven's sake, come on. Let's put all those collar bits away. Oh yeah, I forgot I also have these labels that I was wondering about putting on, putting on the, the front. Yeah, I'll lay those out there and then I might remember them again. So I'll just get my uh, ruler, come in quarter of an inch all the way around. Um, and then you see the background as a border then. And that paper can go back in the drawer because it's just beautiful. I've got some gorgeous big birds that I was thinking I could use, but I don't want to turn it into a bird journal. I don't really want to add anything to it other than this French beautifulness. So I'm just going to have to work it out as I go along. Shady. Probably wants to go out, he's been lying on the bed all day. He's done a runner now, Mr. F's come to put him out. He wants to go out, he just doesn't want to go out. Right, so there we are. That can hear it. Oh, isn't that beautiful? I don't know if you can see that in all its glory, but it's gorgeous. So let's get some glue on the back of that and get that stuck on there. Ah, oh, that's just so so pretty. Um glue, yeah, glue board. Glue and my just spready thing. So, oh, I need to ink around it. I nearly forgot you cut it, you ink it. It's the way it goes. I also have this uh, speckled egg in distress oxide, um, which is what, well, it was a spray of the distress oxide that I made the background for this tag with. Um, but it takes longer to dry. It, it's the ink is certainly more translucent than the oxide, but the ink is fine for what we want for this purpose. I mean, we might go making tags using the oxide, which would be great fun. I love doing things like that. When we get further into the actual um, journal itself. So just the collar again. Spread it out quite quickly with my, uh, well, season ticket actually. For last year when there wasn't a season. Oh dear me. So that's nicely coated. <laughs> Stick it to the board. Oh, get off. Oh, that's just disgusting. It's horrible. Right, so let's get this in the right place, which is about there, I would have thought. Get a dry wipe. 
Don't worry about bits of glue with Kalal. It, it just, when it's dry, it, a bit of friction and it just comes off no problem. Which is probably the main reason I use it actually. Just need a little bit of glue under that corner, it doesn't want to stick. Let's give it a bit of aliens. There we go. So, I mean, the back is easily peasy. It really is. It's just that, and it's just stunning. It's beautiful. I love it. And there's our front again. I'm still thinking about it. So, in the interim, I'm going to put some um, paper in the centre, and I'm going to use this uh, aged paper. I got it from Amazon. Once again, I'm indebted to Tanya for introducing me to this paper. I didn't know you could get it. It's uh, it's really nice, and in the absence of coffee stained paper, it's perfect. Makes a really good substitute. So because it goes darker to the edges, I'll try and keep it to the centre so I've got a bit of sort of uniformity. Um, and that's that. Oops. Good job this rubs off. Well, it comes off with heat. Cut that out. Oh, look at that. Missed half of it out. It's ridiculous. I thought I'd already done it. Okay, I've done it now. So yeah, it's on both sides this aged pattern. Um, and as I say, it's brilliant. If If you can't not be bothered to coffee stain but it's such a faff isn't it so this does the job and yeah you know it works out more expensive but it's convenient we're paying for convenience which is fair enough don't know how this will take the ink Time will tell. Okay, well, I'm going to throw those away. I can't see them being too useful for very much. And bring this over. That should go down there pretty well. It'll need a little trim, they always do, um, but that's fine. That'll go there. So let's get back to this board. I'm going to use the other side because that side's mega sticky. So I'm going to put another board down to protect my board from this board. lots of glue on there so I'm just using the same card just to spread it out I don't want to lift any of the glue off I just want to spread it out so it's really even everywhere okay let's pop that to one side I'm going to lay this on, get the bottom right, and then hopefully the rest will follow. Okay, 
There's so many strings and strands. Okay, so it's on. It is most definitely on. And I've got rid of all the gluey bits that were there. Let's get rid of the Frixian now. Oh, it's really snowing outside. Mr. F did our shopping um, yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Uh, so we're actually all right for everything. We don't need, we're all right for cat food, dog food, everything. So we don't need to move a muscle. All right, I'm just going to cut this down here. It's still a bit wet, obviously. And see if there's anywhere else that needs trimmed up while we're at it. I'm thinking this oxide uh, paper that I made, things don't really want to stick to it. Or oh, they don't want to stick to it with collal. So I might have to find another way. But there's always other ways, so don't worry. We'll get it stuck down. Uh, anything here poking out that shouldn't be? A little bit there. A little bit across there. And that's about it, I think. That's fine. So, let's address the problem of the things that aren't sticking down. This one, for example. Let's try Aileen's as the next available glue. It does have a funny feel to it, that um, paper that I've coloured with oxide. It feels like velvet or something. It's very strange. Mm. This is not wanting to stick. If it keeps this up, I'm going to get my E6000 out because it won't argue with that. Just won't. Let's see how we get on with that. The paper, the ah, I was going to say the yeah. No, nothing wants to stick to it. Mm. Look at that. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, look at that. Right, let's use Aileen's then, see if that works. Blue stick obviously doesn't, but we've discovered that now. Hopefully you won't have this problem, it's just that I uh, decided to colour a page with Distress Oxide. Um, so it's interesting to know that nothing sticks to it. I have never heard that problem anywhere else. I've never heard anybody having that problem. Maybe people just use it for tags and art journals and stuff. I don't know. But anyway, up, it's not having it in my journal.
Okay, let's try this. Let's try this with the aliens on it and see if that's uh, any happier. It does feel more like it wants to stick with the aliens on, if I'm honest. Um, it doesn't even want to slide as soon as I put it down. It's stuck. So hopefully that will be an end to our problem. But I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and make sure. Um, yeah, this is doing the same sort of thing. Keep a good eye on, out on that and see if the aliens works first before I go mad tearing everything up. I've got a feeling that the aliens will work actually. So yeah, I think we'll be alright. I think we'll be okay. Right then, so let's have a look at what's going on on the inside. Well, it looks lovely. Uh, the other ones that I've done, I've put a piece of framers tape up the middle. But I, I'm going to leave it like that this time. I like it and I want to show off the inked edges a bit more really. So I'm not going to use the framers tape. I'm not sure this paper... To... I'm having a bit of a day today. A bit of a day. I'm not sure that paper necessarily wants to take this ink. Might have to call on the oxide. Yeah, let's get the oxide out, see if that works. So we'll have to leave it for another day. I'll carry on with this. Maybe on the second trip round I'll get it. Actually it doesn't look too bad. I'm hoping the alien sticks it okay. Right, so that just needs to be folded in half. So I'm just gently sort of caressing the bit that's going to fold, just to give it the idea that it's going to fold there. So I don't want a wrinkle in the paper. So it's going to fold about there. Let's just check that out. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely. I'm just going to run my bone folder down there. See, I've got no problem on the inside with anything sticking to it because it was just an ordinary piece of white paper. So right, we're making progress. The only thing we've got to do really now is this focal point. So what I, what I know I definitely want are the two butterflies. I definitely want one of these uh, labels of some sort, probably that one. I like that one best. Um, although that one is kind of turquoisey. 
beautiful wild flowers. Mm. No, maybe not. I, I do still like that. Um, and I've still got these same <laughs> die cuts that I showed you before. Nothing has changed in that department. But I quite like that going up there with those butterflies. And I have got another blue one here that I could cut down. Just butch that up a bit. And I could cut that down and have that there. Yeah, I, I like that better than having this colour. This is just wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. Um so yeah that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna I am I'm going to there we go, it's a goner. So that's gonna go there. And then I've got well I've got this bit here that's got two bits on it. They're off a bit of a kilter now to be honest, since I cut the other one off. Yeah, it don't look too bad though. Yeah, I quite like that actually. Quite like it. That and the label. I think we'll be alright at that. Right, let's get I'm not inking anything. Um let's get this stuck down first. And for that I'm using my trusty Aileen's. I'm going to stick this down and then I'm going to revisit the idea of the gold. And the reason I think I want gold is, you know, if you think of all those beautiful Louis XIV um, rooms, sort of chateau rooms, um, that are duck egg blue and um, sort of white, but they've got, they've got gold in them. They've all got gold. So I'm, I'm feeling the desire to put gold in my page. I mean, it might work, it might not. It'd be a tragedy if it didn't. <laughs> I'd be really disappointed. But I can give it a go. Okay, let's get this on anyway. I want it sort of not straight. More like that. Lovely. Perfect, in fact. So the question is, where am I going to put my gold and what? how am I going to apply it? That's a good question. Um, I think I'm going to use a bit of sequin waste. I've got loads of it now. They're, they're all the different colours, but they're all the same dimension. I've heard other people call this something else, and now I can't remember what it's called. It's some fancy name, but basically, the you know, it's sequin waste. It's what they punch sequins out of. Yeah, punchinella, that's what I heard people call it. I don't know what that's about. I really don't. So I'm thinking just the tiniest little bit there that I'm going to put on with my finger. And this is this beautiful cosmic shimmer. That's a bit dried up in there. Uh, which finger hasn't got a nail, that one? So I've just got the tiniest little bit on there. So it is just, let's see. Yeah, I think that's enough. Actually, I quite like that. Now I'm wondering, I'm asking myself, does it need any more? Well, I'll keep asking myself, but I don't think it does. Just wanted a hint. And that's what we've got. So let's see, if I was to put that up there, would that look better? And that... Hmm. Where's the label going to go? How am I going to hide my stalks? I don't know, do I just want two flowers? It's odd, nobody ever puts just two flowers on anything. But I think it might be alright with our butterflies. Like that? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, okay, let's do it then. So I'm going to leave the front cover until after, pretty much until after we finish the whole thing. And then I can see how wide the, we want the flap to be and therefore how much decorated the front section needs to be or not. And we'll only really know that when we've got a bit more stuff in it, see how fat or thin he is, whatever. Oh, the glue does wipe up off that paper back, um, wrapping paper. I thought it wouldn't. So I could put that there. That would look nice there. Yeah, let's ink around that, I think, first. I wish this new dabber would hurry up and get to be an old dabber. Okay, that's lovely. So how about there? Yeah, quite like that. Let's do that then. And it's a question of the butterflies, and there's not much question at all about them, actually. They're just butterflies and they're going to be stuck on the page. I'm going to um, actually make a page of these butterflies. I'm going to copy and paste them and I'm going to make some different sizes. These are quite small, I mean they're perfect for this, but I might want some larger ones. And I might even want some smaller ones, so we'll see. Um, I'll make a whole page and fussy cut them out. And then I'll have them ready for when we need them. Because I suspect this isn't the last time we're going to see these butterflies. That's what I think. Let's pop that on there. Oops, not there, there. Lovely. And this one. And then I think that's us about done. I'm going to keep checking that glue situation for the next few hours. See what, you know, if it actually does stick or it doesn't. If it doesn't, we need to know now. Yeah, quite like that there. Okay. I think we might need another tiny little bit of gold somewhere. Just to tie it, that, that one bit looks a bit lost on its own, to be honest. Um, just a little bit of stenciling in there, and that's looking beautiful. I love that page. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling um, with my rose stencil. Where I put it. Oh no. Well, I will. I will stencil in there um, when I find my stencil. But in the interim, I'm just going to put a little bit of gold somewhere else. 
and I'm wondering about a tiny little bit down here and a tiny bit up there and then we'd get our three things which which is always good so I use my finger with no nail so I can get right in just a little bit not much Yeah, that's really nice. This is bringing it to life, guys. Sometimes you just need a bit of bling, a bit of glam. So there we are. Very nice. Let's just see if I can find this stencil. It's usually only it's usually over here in this part of the world. Never tidy up. Oh, I found it. It's slipped down a gully. Yeah, never tidy up is my advice. I just can't find a thing. You cannot find a thing. Well, that's looking really nice. Just give that a couple of seconds to dry while I um, just stencil into into here. I'm just going to use the distressing. It doesn't matter how rich or otherwise it is. Just the fact that it's there is sufficient. It's really nice actually. Sort of come out a grey type colour which I really like. Yeah, there we go. Very nice too. Okay, so that's um, wild away an afternoon. Um, it, it does need something on the top, some lace or something like that, but you all know how to do that. So I shall do that off camera and then um, it will be ready to go into our pocket. Like so. And doesn't it look smart? Yeah, it does actually. I really like that. So I'm going to leave that out to dry properly. I'm going to keep a close eye on that glue situation. Uh, on the back and the front just to make sure that it's actually sticking and I will see you again very soon for part three <laughs> hope you enjoyed that see you soon bye